Well, hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Glad you're here. Here we are again for another Tips at Three. Um, and this is, I'm Rebecca Kosis from Chia of California, and I'm joined by two of my friends. I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Michaela. I am a homeschooling graduate and a homeschooling mom of three. I volunteer with Chia for the Inland Empire RAB. And that's the Regional Advisory Board member. So, yes. Yeah, so, so Michaela and her husband Brad are your contacts if you live in the Riverside or San Bernardino County. And I'm Nathan Pierce with Family Protection Ministries. Um, I work on legislation that impacts um, your right to homeschool in California privately. And um, I'm also a homeschool graduate and a homeschool parent um, up here in the Sacramento area. And I work uh, with Chia as their legislative consultant. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for introducing yourselves. So today's tips at three, we're going to be talking about homeschooling legal terms. And this is um, because we have so many new people in the homeschool community now due to COVID-19 and families are not happy with the accommodations that are being made for their children in public school campuses. And so we're just seeing a tsunami of interest in homeschooling. So we're going to really talk about what is homeschooling, talk about some of these legal terms. And um, that's why that's why we have Nathan here too, because he's, <laughs> he's super familiar with the law. So um, so with that, go, um, I think, Michaela, you've got some questions for us. Yes, well, you know, when you look in the California Department of Education code, it's long, it's very detailed, there's big terms, and not every new homeschooling mom um, has the ability or has the time to sit and just read through it all. So um, there's hints in the code about homeschooling, you know, they might talk about immunization, exemptions, and certain things, but you can't find a lot about homeschooling. So um, maybe Nathan, can you share, like, is it a legal term in California, or how do we, um, how is it referred to in the code? Yeah, well, in California, there is no legal term in the code homeschool or homeschooling. Um, in fact, everybody that is enrolled in a school is either enrolled in a public school or a private school, and there's different types of those schools. Um, but ultimately, that's how it, what it comes down to is public school student, private school student, and there's various kinds of both. Um, as we talked briefly about yesterday, we talked about the tutorial exemption, which um, is where you have a, a private tutor teaching children. It's a, cr a credentialed teacher. That's a different law altogether. But um, when it comes down to homeschool, that term is not a legal term. Um, should I should I bring in that chart now or wait a, a minute? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and bring it bring it up. That would be that would be fine because we I want to talk about that then. What is the the public public school versus private school? So here here's a very simple simple chart. Yeah, so we want to do a nicer version of this, obviously, for everyone to be able to look at and follow through this with their own, um, in, in their own hands. But this uh, side on the right hand side that's in black is the public school um, system in California. And there's various parts of the public school system. Uh, historically and traditionally, we have had campus based uh, brick and mortar schools. Um, we have had um, ISPs or independent study programs that started up. Um, and then after, after those had been going for a little while, uh, we had charter schools that started up. And charter schools, as we know today, have a, a variety of different types. Um, there are, you know, the traditional campus-based school that's a charter, and there are um, schools that have a campus, but they also have independent study at home students. There are also charter schools that are set up that are all just independent students working at home. And they check in with the charter school and they submit paperwork to the charter school. So those are different types. Now, obviously we have campus-based schools today here under COVID that we're looking at and we have seen them not so campus-based anymore. They're, they're going online. Right. And so they're designed as campus-based schools, but now they're they're trying 
their best to provide an online education or a, or a distance learning uh, education that is coming out of this campus-based school. So then on the other side of this, this red dashed line here, we have- Can I, can I interrupt you just a second? Um, yeah. Then let's go back up to the top because there's something there that I think is interesting for parents should point should know. Many many parents know that we have a cult compulsory attendance law in California. You know that all children between the ages of six and eighteen need to be enrolled in a public school. Right. That's what the law says. So when you're attending a public school, either campus based, an ISP, or a, or a charter school, or a home, something with a home based program, you're in compliance with that compulsory attendance law. So right. what gets you out? of having to be <laughs> having yeah, that, out of that compulsory attendance there. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. And, and that's kind of the question that divides the two sides of this chart is either you're complying with that requirement of the law and attending a public school or that six to 18 year old is exempted. Now there are a couple of exemptions. One is the tutorial exemption. One of them is the private school exemption that's found in in 48222 in the Ed Code, which says specifically that if a child is enrolled in a private school, then they are exempt from public school attendance, mm -hmm. which is, is in the law. They have to attend public school or be exempted. And these are the two ways, the tutor and the private school are the two ways that you can be exempted from that. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the private school, um, there are different types of private schools. There's the traditional, what we think of as a traditional campus-based private school. Um, then there's the, the PSP, which sometimes there's a, which is a private school satellite program or umbrella school, which has a number of families in it, but they typically will do most of their studies at home or all of their studies at home under the direction of, of the parents. And then there's a single family private school, which is a family creating a private school in their own home. Mm -hmm. And they're, not any of these look exactly identical to each other. They don't have exactly the same desks all lined up in the schoolroom and all the same books. They each one are different. A private school um, at one side of town is different than the private school at the other side of town. They function a little bit differently, but they are under the same laws in California. Um, back uh, in 2008, this was actually challenged in court in Southern California, the second appellate court uh, had a ruling saying the, the single family private homeschool wasn't legitimate. And that was uh, revisited. That court actually reversed their own decision and said, oh, actually, there are hints in the law that we didn't really notice before that actually point out homeschooling parents teaching their own children at home is a legitimate form of private school. It's actually, the, so they determined that it was a species of private school. And so it's it's been very well established that that's how the law works in California. Yeah, I think this chart's very helpful to be able to break that apart to see. And Michaela, I think you had a couple of other questions there. Yes, well, just, you know, as private homeschoolers, so, we would just consider ourselves falling under private school, right? As we're looking at this chart. Right, yeah. Um, anybody that's on the, the, the part of the chart from private school on down, whether it's a campus base or a PSP or a single family, they would all consider themselves to have students that are enrolled in a private school because that they are enrolled in a private school. And so they're private school students. Um, whether it's their own private school in their own home or part of another bigger school. Sometimes a PSP is connected with a campus school, sometimes not. All of those are still private schools. Mm -hmm. So then a charter school would fall under public school. So that's where I think a lot of people, a lot of misconception happens. They think, oh, I'm just going to join a charter and I'm going to be homeschooling, but really it's under that public school category. It's true, and sometimes, sometimes you hear people use that term homeschooling in a lot of different ways, and, and sometimes it can have something to do with where the teaching is happening, sometimes, but not always. So sometimes it can be somebody that's enrolled their child in a charter school, but they're, 
they're teaching them at home, so they call it homeschooling. Um, sometimes, well, under COVID, people are referring to everybody as homeschooling. So it, that's that has to do largely with, with the location of the education. Other times you see people that are referring to sending their kids somewhere to someone else for them to homeschool them. Um, so that's not homeschooling at your own house. It's somebody using that term to describe something. And that's the best term that they can come up with in their mind to, to mentally come up with a title for that. So yeah, it does get it does get used for a lot of different things. Charter school students are public school students. Um, private homeschooling single family that creates their own private school or are enrolled in a private school satellite program, that's private school student. So there's public school students and private school students. Mm -hmm. And so that, so, so the, the term homeschooling we've established is not a, a legal term. And yet many people use it when they're wanting to withdraw their children from their public school that they're in. And we're hearing that there is, there is some confusion involved in what the process is. So we don't necessarily recommend that families walk into their child's school and say, we're gonna homeschool because right. <laughs> there's, there's really no legal term for that. We would, um, we would highly recommend that families um, contact their child's school and let them know that they're withdrawing them um, and that they'll be transferring them to a private school. That's what the legal term is. Um, the, we've seen there's been an awful lot of confusion um, on the school end when parents say, well, we're going to homeschool, then the school feels that it's un they're under obligation to make sure that this student right away is enrolled in another school. And that's technically not what the law says, is it? It says it, there, there's no requirement that your child is enrolled in a new school before you withdraw them from their current school. Uh, right, in the middle, especially in the middle of the summer. Um, typically when most schools are, um, are on break, um, then you see a lot of people moving from one town to another. Mm -hmm. um, it's a perfectly reasonable time to be pulling your child out of one school as you are still trying to figure out where it is that they're gonna be going. So there's no problem with that. I mean, there may be confusion because there's perhaps going to be a delay before the new school requests the records from the prior school. But in terms of withdrawing a, a student from a school, there's no need for them to be immediately enrolled in a new school in the middle of the school year, you could see that there might be an issue because if a student is out of school for too long, they're considered truant and you don't wanna be in that spot. You right. want your child to be complying with the law, whether it's the a compulsory education in a public school or one of the exemptions. And that would mean they would have to be enrolled in a private school. So you want, especially during the, during the school year, you want that window to be pretty small um, you you should really be enrolling them pretty much right away in during the school year, but in the summer that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So you want to, and, and right now there are students that are still in in school. I know many year-round schools have started up their next school year already for a few weeks before they take another break. So that would be something to consider: is right. either enroll them in a PSP or. Um, they can even file their PSA now if they need to. That PSA form is up until July 31st. So, okay, so where, so, so then really, where did the term homeschooling come from? There's, that mm -hmm. is the question. <laughs> if it's, if, if there's no such legal term, where did homeschooling come from? Well, uh, that's a good question. I mean, um, Michaela, how about how about for you back when you um, were being homeschooled? What was the difference between the other option and and what you were doing? 
I considered my parents to be kind of like the pioneers of the homeschooling movement. They were kind of when it first started, but that meant truly that parents were taking full responsibility. They felt, they felt most of the time that the Lord had called them, mm-hmm. you know, that was why they were doing, you know, many of the early pioneers, I think were driven because of religious beliefs. Now there's so many reasons to homeschool um, and we see it's much more broad, but I feel like back in the early term where it came from is that they wanted to bring their children home into their home to truly educate them in the home. And now, you know, there's um, so many different homeschool programs where you could be taking them, you know, almost every day of the week if you wanted to, but really I think it had to originate with bringing them into the home and having the parents partnered with the Lord really following after that home model, you know, of education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, and it, it was who was in charge, right? Because right. The, because the, um, many schools, many educators, districts, many states did not believe that parents should be able to teach their children at home without government oversight. Right. And and so the children were either enrolled in public school or, you know, and the state was the authority or mom and dad took them out of school and they were homeschooling and that homeschooling, it was home based, but the parents were the authority. Now we know in your family's case, Michaela, and then it was like, likewise in our homeschool, um, we homeschooled our children because we felt that God wanted us to do this, to disciple them. It was, you know, to pass along our faith to our children. So ultimately God was in charge, um, but that's really, you know, that that's really the difference there is it, it wasn't so much that it had to do with the home or where education was taking place, but it had to do with who was in charge. Um, and that's what we called homeschooling. I don't, I don't know what year you were, years where you were homeschooled, um, Michaela. I, you don't, you don't want to, me to admit that lie? No, no, no. <laughs> you don't. You don't have to say. I'll. I'll just say it. I'll. I'll date myself and homeschooling. You know, in the in the eighties, um, it had to do with um, who was in charge. It didn't have anything to do with uh, where the education was taking place. And, and if you look on that chart, you can look and see that some of these things, the charter schools, even the ISPs, in the early eighties, didn't exist. They were added to the code even later on. And so really all you had were the campus-based schools. Uh, Occasionally you would see um, somebody set up a little program in their private school when Johnny breaks his leg and he's stuck at home for a few weeks, right? They give him homework at home. That's as homeschooling as the public school would, would get back then. Um, And so, yeah, like you're saying, there was a difference between being at the school and coming home. And that's really what it looked like. Mm -hmm. I think back in the early years, um, truancy was a huge concern. And I think now, even as we're talking about these parents who walk into their school and say, hey, I'm going to homeschool, probably at the forefront of the minds of these school um, staff is truancy, that they're wanting to know, are these students really going to be educated? So I think it could ease the staff's mind and just make for a much smoother transition for the parents, less stress for the parents. If they just say, we're going to be joining a private school because I know even when I was younger, my mom would ask me that. She'd say, if we're at the dentist office, you know, and it's the early eighties and homeschooling was not socially acceptable. She would say, just say we're um, private schooled. You don't need to say that we're homeschooled to the dentist because they don't need to know that. Right, right. And in those, yeah, in in the early 80s, so many people did not, you know, didn't know what homeschooling was. The first question you get asked is, is that even legal? Right. We don't need to open up. Right, (laughs) right. right. Do we? Do we? And then you might get somebody's opinion on it as well. Right, right. And, and, And that court case that I mentioned was in 2008. So, before that, there, there were public officials that did have questions about it. Ultimately, in 2008, it had become much more mainstream, and you ended up with a lot of public figures weighing in saying, no, this is, this is a good thing. 
and this is highly appropriate for parents to continue to be able to do this privately. In fact, um, Governor uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the time and um, our Attorney General Jerry Brown at the time, both as well as the Superintendent of Public Instruction, Jack O'Connell at the time in 2008, all came out with statements supporting the, the private homeschool community. So it had changed by then to be much more mainstream and accepted in society, which we didn't see that so much back in the, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I think that might, might explain to some of those that are newer to the homeschool community. And if you say to some middle-aged couple, and we, oh yeah, we're, we're homeschooling, and maybe you're, you lay out your scenario, your children are in an enrichment center a couple days a week, or you're homeschooling through a charter home-based program, and they say, what? That's not homeschooling, <laughs> because they understood homeschooling to be aside from the authority of the public school, and they understood homeschooling to be uh, home-based and parent-led. It wasn't delegated out, and so, um, and then for some of them, they remember that it was very a hard-won battle, and so there, there are some emotions that sometimes rise up, and so I just hate to see anybody offended or have hurt feelings because of the um, differences of the way people perceive things. So hopefully that maybe that little history lesson will tell, help everybody to kind of understand where each other is coming from. So yeah. Yeah. We've so, come a long uh, way. <laughs> yeah, we have come a long way. And I have to hand it to the homeschool pioneers um, that they did a good job of proving to the rest of the world that there's more than one way to educate a child. Mm -hmm. you know, the public school model is the uh, not the only way for kids to get an education, and in some kids, you know, specifically some children, it's it's not the it's not uh, a good way for them. They don't fit that model. So, um, but our our goal here today is to kind of help explain these legal terms to those that are new to the homeschool community, and um, we really want to help equip you and educate you so that you can get a smooth. Uh, start on your journey. And also we um, just want to let you know that we're here to help you. Um, we, you know, we're, you, we just welcome you with open arms. We want to do whatever we can to help you see success because we know you parents love your kids and you want to do the best that you can for them. And, um, and, and nobody loves your kids and knows them like you do. So we're, we're here for you. You just let us know what we can do to help. So, and with that, um, I think we'll go ahead and say, uh, you know, thanks for joining us and I'll go ahead and end this live stream. God bless. Bye. Bye.